So lately I've been charging the batteries out here on the doghouse. When it's not raining anyways. So these are done. So today we're going to look at bump steer. What is it? What causes it? And does this machine have any? So let's dig around a little bit and uh, see what we come up with. Hey, so I picked up these tires here for the E-Revo. These are Pro-Line Trenchers, pretty deep tread, and uh, I think it's going to be a pretty good tire for uh, winter and stuff in the snow. So, bump steer, it's a term that's uh, generally used to describe what happens to the wheels on a vehicle that has uh, some messed up geometry. And uh, what I mean by that is, let's say the suspension was going through its cycle, and I've got the front tires in my hand here, the suspension is going down and then it toes out and then the suspension goes the other way and then it toes in. So that's bump steer. The suspension is causing it to steer when it's not supposed to. So the E-Revo seems to be set up fairly well. It uh, doesn't really have much for bump steer. At least you can't see it right off hand. Maybe if a guy would carefully measure, you know, but uh, it seems to be pretty good. It does have some scrub and that is when the wheels physically move in and out because of the, uh, the angle of the A-arms. So you can see some of that. But as far as the bump steer, really doesn't seem to be much going on there. This is the part of the video where we don't do any talking. So let's say that piece of paper is an A-arm and where it's bending represents ball joints or a rod end, someplace in the suspension where it can pivot. So now I'm going to add another A-arm and you notice it's bending in the same location. So these two pieces of paper, it doesn't matter if they're bent like this or if I completely stretch them out and make them straight, in either case they're completely the same length. So now I'm going to add a tie rod. Normally the tie rod would be sandwiched between the A-arms, but uh, just to illustrate. So at this end, they're all the same. They're bending in the same location. But over here, the tie rod has its own spot to flex. So what would happen when everything is stretched out, everything is the same length. However, when everything starts to flex, then the tie rod becomes shorter than the A-arms and it causes the wheel to get pulled in. Okay, so back to the drawing board. I just revised the tie rod. So you can see it used to flex here. Well, now I made it so that it flexes here together with the A-arms. So now they're all speaking the same language. They all do the same thing. And then uh, bump steer is uh, not a problem anymore. But typically, for vehicles that are uh, on the street, a lot of production vehicles, they've got a shorter top A-arm. And so then the uh, tie rod has to, be, has to be completely revised. You know, you can't use this setup on uh, a, a, a short top and a longer bottom. So then the, uh, the tie rod length has to be revised so that the pivot points are uh, coinciding with the different angles here of the uh, A-arms. But it works. It can be made to work. So you see how the tie rod is parallel to the A-arms and the A-arms are parallel to each other? Well that's a big factor in getting rid of bump steer and from there it's all about the pivot points, exactly where does it all flex and also the length of the tie rod itself in uh, relation to the, uh, the A-arms. So now in that paper illustration when I say that the tie rod it gets shorter, it's not that you know, like if you measure it with a tape measure, it's physically getting shorter. Not like the, the metal is compressing and stretching, but it's from a geometry perspective. What the wheel can feel is um, it gets shorter and longer. All right, so there's the tie rod hooked onto the rack, and it's also hooked onto this end. A-arms are in place, so is the spindle. So I'm gonna show you what the bump steer looks like on this thing now. So I'm gonna lift this all up with my right arm and try and record with my left. And what I'm watching for is that the spindle isn't going to point forward or point backwards as it uh, goes through its motion here. 
So uh, let's see if I can pull this off here. All right. So that was about 33 inches of travel there that I just simulated looking for a bump steer, but in actual use it would be a little less. So I haven't done anything with this machine at all since the last video, but it's still in the bucket list. It's a, kind of a really nice project when the weather is bad outside. Winter time is awesome for this kind of stuff. But uh, it's in the bucket list. We'll get her done. <laughs>